This amazing battle arc continues. What's going to be the matchup today? Oh, it's Megumi! This should be really good. Who's he up against, though? Starting out with a, a dramatic intro. Fighting into school. This guy, I really want to know what he's about. Besides just, you know, lineage. There's got to be more to it than that. What does this remind me of? These tracking arrows. My angel frogs, yeah. Does he use his own blood? And he can, like, fuse them. That is his own blood. Oh, he's, a, he's also a bloodbender. That is true, yeah. Thanks for pointing out that obvious parallel that I missed, Megumi. Megumi. <laughs> I like how they're shouting out each other's powers. Is there a pack for that also? Oh man, what is going on? What the heck? Is that speed or teleportation? He's fast! This is what... Damn, what was her name? Hama. The details that Hama never explained. Don't forget the position of the moon. He's doping! Performance enhancement drugs? In Jujutsu Kaisen? <laughs> Things just got real dark. Why does anime make walking look so cool? There's the Mai and Maki moment in the intro. It's amazing how much inintentional blindness comes to effect in anime openings. Makes me wonder, what am I missing in life? Pretty sure I just saw uh, Momo floating in the baseball field too. It like worries me <laughs> legitimately. Like if I can't capture details in an anime opening that I've seen, what, four or five times at this point? What the hell am I missing in life? It's right in front of my eyes. Guaranteed, what I observe is the tip of the tip of the, the iceberg. Birds. Episode 18, Sage. We get a departure from the Kyoto Sister Battle School title. Scheme. <laughs> yeah, she's still in the game, but swordless. Of all the thoughts, the rogue thoughts to emerge. <laughs> Useless Miwa. <laughs> what? Oh, there it is. Oh, she retired! I was kind of hoping she do something cool without a sword. Oh, is him? He can do that? That's a whole, whole other thing. I thought he was just gonna get real loud. Maybe this is the pair of this episode. They've been talking about him so much, hyping him up. He seems to be the threat that they're all most conscious of. Oh, Gan Gangajima flashback? Really hedging their bets, even at the expense of their own students, maybe? There's no, no chance this will backfire, right? And as we all know from movies, when you, when it comes to trained monsters or dinosaurs, nothing ever goes wrong. They're always totally obedient. Life uh, finds a way. Ooh, all these little things happening at the same time. Oh my god, if you only knew what was going on. If you only knew the relationship, the brothership, the best friendship that was forming. Got a soft spot for me, I see. There it is. Oh, what? That was quick? Who did it? <gasps> the villains do show up! They do show up! I didn't expect it to happen that abruptly. But this is great cannon fodder for him, though, no? Although he's probably extremely strong. Here they are. All of a sudden. As, like, crazy as Ark was, it just got even crazier. This guy thinks he's gonna get a coat rack, and what he's really about to get is the infinite and nothingness at the same time. And flashback. Oof, imagine hearing that about your mother. He got the power. Maybe he's doing this for his mother. Damn. Everyone is sort of coveting his abilities. What's the threat? 
Is it just that he's cursed? Play the part. Interesting phrasing. There you go. It is for the mother. That's a little better than just, you know, blood legacy. I doubt that, yeah. I mean, the guy's driven. Give him that. I mean, that's about as good as it gets. <laughs> I don't know, you can do a lot worse as an outlook. It's a decoy. Yep. Do we got a new one? Is it the elephant? Yeah, <laughs> Max Elephant, no less. He gave it a cool first name. Max looking pretty bubblicious. And he can conjure water. Let's see, if you were a true waterbender. <laughs> That happened so quickly. Oh no! But threw a violet of blood that he just was carrying around. That is the enemy invading your tournament arc, as they do, you know? I think I was just talking about priorities, and how focusing on weird things is a sign that you just don't have accurate perspective on the dangers of life. Well, actually, in a weird way, I feel like the enemies are probably saving Yuji right now by providing a greater threat, something more important to focus on. Or even if Yuji is a great cause, this is better than Mechamaro killing Panda, etc. Or my attacking Maki, or whatever. <laughs> I like how that was a whisper. All the curses just gone. GTG, as they call him. It's the growing threat everyone's sort of been ignorant about. This is cool, involving the teachers. Right, because it's all about money. <laughs> we get it. <laughs> I like how irreverent he is. The Gakuganji. Emerge from darkness. Purify that, which is impure. Interesting. Can't wait for you to meet the infinite and nothing. Though every scene with Gojo makes me nervous because I feel like he's just too good to last. It's not going to be the Lumberjack Bandit, though. I'm almost pissed. Panda also pissed, ready to get shredded again. I can't wait to see th those two team up. He's just running to be polite at this point. He can easily teleport. Is it going to be that simple? They know about Gojo. They wouldn't come in and blind like this. Is it tailored specifically for him? Is it that he's the greatest threat, so they're trying to keep him out, or are they trying to isolate him? Given that they have power levels, that could have been the criteria for which they, they made this thing. Some great perspective. Yeah, listen to that, Gakukunanji. Jerk. Take notes. Alright, Gakukanji, this is your chance to actually do something good. Maybe this is where I start to respect him. He's the one with the guitar? I was wondering what that meant in the opening. That's a twist. Yep, they're all connected. ふうしも報告と近い。あの人の絵でもわかるもんだな。つなまよ。そうですね。exactly。彼が何を言っているのかわかるのか。今そんなことどうでもいいでしょ。and <laughs> This guy's pretty tough. Oh boy, one of those. <laughs> Nonsense. Yeah, who the hell cares about the planet? I don't think that's true. 
I like how this guy has appointed himself spokesman for the trees. Though this is a world of curses, so we never know. That explains his tree like powers. Okay. This guy's a little unstable. Is he actually a curse born from nature, though? That'd be interesting. I always find this line of thought somewhat bizarre. To say that humans are against or a threat to nature draws an imaginary and somewhat arbitrary line between humans and nature as if humans are somehow outside of the, you know, the natural world and ecosystem. In a sense, it contains the same arrogance that it's fighting against. There's the same human entitlement in it, even if it reaches a different conclusion. There is, of course, the idea that humans are destructive. As if nature isn't the most destructive thing imaginable. There's a really strange anthropomorphism physization, anthropomorphization that happens when it comes to forests and, and such. Juju Sampo. No, no, no more Jogo. What what is happening? What is happening? This is all canon, right? <laughs> All these Juju samples are canon. They went to an all-girls high school together. I just love dirt so much. Dirt and flowers. <sighs> if only people got me like you do. Soil. <laughs> is that not good or is that good? You have a hole in your hand, my friend. <laughs> This is interesting and disturbing. Tree dude is sick enough as it is, then you learn that he or she is attracted to Gogo, -Go, which is the most heinous thing about these curses so far in the show. Wow, that was a, an episode. There was just so much in there. There were just so many transitions. Every time I thought I knew what the episode was about, it, it wasn't, but also it was. Like, it's Megumi battling a, a bloodbender and the bloodbender's backstory, or a hint of it at least, even making it about the mother instead of just making it about clan ties, even though that's still in there somewhere, is at least something, something more sympathetic. It's also Miwa getting taken out. It's Inumaki entering the tournament and, you know, thinking he's gonna fight this level one or first grade curse but not and then of course the villains making an entrance and the the faculty being activated so all of a sudden there's all these really great elements the tournament arc has drastically shifted in tone and stakes although oddly it makes it seem like yuji is safer than he ever was what makes it cooler as i think is the case in a lot of tournament arcs is that the villain attack is going to mean a lot more in the school now that we've invested some time with, with the characters and seeing some of their backstories i mean for example one of the things i'm most excited about is yuji and toto fighting back to back assuming that happens we also got the introduction of max lots of really exciting stuff